In today's news, a two injured in Virgin Gorda shooting and officials respond to an article regarding fur persons entering the BVI illegally. And over the weekend, a new case of COVID-19 recorded in the BVI as well as the BVI and the UN widen cooperation as Brexit ends EU aid. All that and so much more when 284 News returns. The wind! Oh! What is I'm freaking out! Is time. Two eight four news coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin'? What's really good? What's happening? What's happening? What's up? Welcome, everybody. It's Monday, November 30th, 2020. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Javon Wilson, coming to you live from the beautiful yes. British Virgin Islands out of 284 News. Now, viewers, lots going on uh, locally, Busy regionally, as, as well as internationally. Yes. Uh, before we get into today's newscast, we're just going to touch on some summary uh, topics that we're going to get into uh, not only today, but this week. VG Properties uh, getting booked ahead, mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, of tomorrow's reopening to visitors. USVI captures alleged kingpin inked to BVI's recent cocaine bus and U.S. citizens claim unfair, unsanitary detention in the BVI. And of course, the DPP responds. We're going to get to that. Over the weekend, Lions Club officially introduced the holiday season with the annual lighting of the Christmas tree. And we also see another case of COVID-19 being recorded yes. in the BVI just a mere few days prior to our grand reopening, that is tomorrow, December 1st. But over the weekend as well, a big win for Rotary, uh, persons who support Rotary, that is. We had a raffle of $20,000 yes, as well as $7,500. We see Miss June Samuels there. She was the grand winner of that $20,000 prize. And a resident out of Anigata carting away with $7,500. So, of course, kudos to those persons for supporting Rotary, uh, an organization that continues to support our community, as well as Winter Wonderland finally kicked off at the Pier Park uh, over the weekend um, and was already deemed a success, yes. Ron. Uh, we've been told that hundreds and hundreds of persons came out to support. Um, and of course, this is the first time around we're seeing a synthetic rink uh, in the BVI, obviously um, launched by Visor. They're trying to raise just about $100,000. So lots going on. And we want to encourage you to go out and support uh, their open from 2 to 7 p.m. on weekdays and 2 to 10 p.m. on the weekends as well. Go out and support Visor as they continue to support us here in the BVI. Uh, Jovan, that was definitely uh, a sight to see as yes. the kids uh, looked like they were having a terrific time. And adults uh, yeah, too, yeah. all the way up to 60 they years old. They were definitely doing mm -hmm. their thing. Uh, now, continuing on, on the local scene, confirmed reports from sources within the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force confirm that two individuals have been hurt in a shooting incident on Virgin Gorda yesterday, Sunday, November 29, 2020. Now, the victims were initially taken to the nurse Iris O'Neill Clinic on Virgin Gorda, then subsequently transferred to the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital on Tortola for further care. Investigations are ongoing. It is unclear as to the severity of their injuries or what exactly took place. Uh, we're going to have more details as the story develops. All right. And now, uh, based on new epidemiological records, another case of COVID-19, like we mentioned before, has been recorded here in the British Virgin Islands over the weekend. Now, Minister of Health Honorable Carvin Malone told 284 News that the new case was someone who actually repatriated back to the BVI. Honorable Malone said, and I quote, it was a returning resident who tested while in quarantine, end of quote. Now, the recent confirmation comes just a few days. As a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow we reopen the yes. borders. Uh, so for international travel, that is, uh, for persons coming back into the territory, the residents as well as our tourists, that date is tomorrow. And to date, the territory has recorded just about 73 confirmed cases. Of that toll, there has been a record recovery of 71 cases one death and now only one active case. Now, Ron, I think this is a perfect reminder, like the government uh, usually say, yes. we are not out of the woods just yet. And a uh, sobering reminder for us to continue to sanitize, continue to wear a mask and continue to be careful uh, in, in relevance to not only uh, the, the 
presence of yes. COVID-19 in the BVI, but also what's to come once those borders reopen. But also a reminder that our systems, our mm -hmm. protocols, they're working efficiently uh, because clearly this person was, uh, this case was identified while in quarantine. So it really just goes to show that we are doing exactly what we should even prior to our reopening tomorrow. Absolutely. Now continuing on on the local scene, in a government information services release dated November 29th, 2020, government and law enforcement officials, particularly from the DPP's office, have responded to claims regarding four persons entering the territory illegally. Now the very uh, talked about story uh, made international news and the release stated, and I quote, there is an erroneous news article titled Virginia Woman Worried About Safety of Sister Detained in the British Virgin Islands by Scott Taylor of ABC7 on November 26, 2020. Now the public is being advised by the DPP of the following facts. Here is what they've stated. On November 19, 2020, four persons were apprehended by the Joint Task Force, particularly Customs and Immigration Officers. They are Nicholas Canron, uh, John Hines Jr., Lene and Hines, and G.N. McKinnon, who were on board a vessel that entered the territory's waters without permission from the Ministry of Health and the Chief Immigration Officer. Now, while the territory's borders remain closed, those persons were change, charged sorry, with illegal entry without the permission of an immigration officer, contrary to Section 20 of the Immigration Ordinance Cap 130 as amended. Now, pursuant to the public health laws of the territory that were introduced to protect the territory citizens from the spread of the novel coronavirus, the four individuals have been placed on mandatory quarantine for a period of four days at a local hotel. Now, all four persons are safe and are being cared for by the government of the Virgin Islands. Now, the matter was submitted, uh, Jovan, to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution on the 27th of November 2020 to the Commissioner of Customs at 11 15 a.m., following which the matter was processed and forwarded to the magistrate's court via the police prosecution unit for an urgent hearing date. Now, the public is being reminded of the territory's reserves. Uh, they do reserve the right uh, mm -hmm. to uh, apprehend and prosecute any person, uh, regardless of their nationality, race, gender, and so forth. Now, who violates the laws of the British Virgin Islands? Uh, Jovan, this is a story that has garnered some international attention, of course. Um, and while the government of the Virgin Islands uh, continues to do what they think uh, is best to uh, support and protect the residents. Um, obviously, within the laws, laws, these four persons were, um, you know, in breach mm -hmm. of uh, the ordinance. Um, there's some press that we don't particularly like, especially as we uh, continue to seek to reopen our borders. And I think um, for the uh, the betterment of the territory, especially when we speak about BVI love, uh, we could. Uh, just send them back where they came from. And you know, absolutely, absolutely. And that would have helped a lot because like you said, Ron, it could be very damaging to the absolutely. very tourism product that we try to promote. And these are persons based on the reports we've heard who have also in the past frequented the territory. Correct. So clearly tourists in every right. Um, but like the president of the BVI Marine Association said, was the Customs and Immigration Department acting within the law? Absolutely. Of course. Could they have been a bit more lenient? Uh, would, of course, the fines and detaining these persons? Absolutely as well. Because we do have to think about those far-reaching um, implications, especially now that we are about to reopen. And, and Joanne, we have course. to be careful uh, uh, what um, issues we, we, we pursue uh, mm -hmm. just to pursue them. Absolutely. And I think this is a prime example. But uh, again, Ron, coming yes. back to the fact that we we have one prime responsibility, and that is to protect, to protect our, our territory. Yes. So I think uh, we have to say kudos to them in this instance and trust that it will set a precedence and a real example for persons coming into the territory to abide by those rules. Most definitely. Our viewers still ahead. Lions Club, they ring in the holiday season with the annual Christmas tree lighting and BVI and UN widen cooperation as Brexit ends uh, EU aid. All this and so much more. You're watching 284 News. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it would read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. 
Viewers, welcome back. You're watching 284 News. Over the weekend, yesterday in particular, Sunday, the Lions Club rang in the holiday season with the annual Christmas tree lighting uh, that took place and really set the precedence for the uh, territory and residents. Uh, Jovan, it was absolutely amazing. Yes, uh, we saw mm -hmm. uh, children, adults enjoying themselves, mm -hmm. uh, really having an opportunity to uh, share Virgin Islands culture, mm -hmm. true Christmas. We saw mm -hmm. skits, we saw dances, yes. of course, steel pen, uh, Fungi music, and we have a few clips for you. Take a look. Are you guys falling asleep on me? Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Hopefully this next item will wake you up. We have a skit up next. Our next item is a skit written by Janice A. Stout entitled Virgin Islands Caroling in Spite Of. Actors and actresses for this skit are provided by Janice A. Stout, Crossing Dove Productions, and Janice Harris of the BBI Drama Society. Ladies and gentlemen, Virgin Islands, Carolyn. That was, of course, uh, the sounds of the 3G band. Now, mm, Jovan, mm. there is nothing like a Virgin <laughs> Islands Christmas. Absolutely. I mean, the food. And mm -hmm. by the way, you were supposed to go Carolyn with me last year, so let's make it happen this All year. Right, All right, well, bet, bet. Well, we're we, going. We're going. We're definitely, definitely going with Kyla, too. Of, of course, of course. Of course, she's on the team now. A very uh, special um, uh, uh, introduction yes. to uh, culture and heritage mm -hmm. uh, over the Christmas season. Absolutely. So we look forward to that.
And it's something we look forward to every year yes. from the Lions family. We're so grateful that they continue to uphold this tradition, of course. But Ron, I know many persons were really questioning what Christmas would look like True. this year. A lot of persons said Christmas is canceled, yes. of course. Uh, but we're very happy to see some amount of joy and you know us being able to revive the spirit of Christmas here in the BVI. So I agree. kudos. Viewers, on we go with the newscast. Now, the British Virgin Islands has strengthened cooperation with the United Nations ahead of losing future European Union support for sustainable development at the end of 2020 when the Brexit transition period expires. Now, to advance the sustainable development of the islands, the British Virgin Islands government has secured technical assistance from the UN Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, which of course is known as ECLAC, to help develop a national sustainable development plan for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Now, in addition to that, UN ECLAC has also agreed to co-chair with the British Virgin Islands a summit of the Regional Commission's 14 associate, associate member countries, sorry, in 2021 that will focus on addressing the assistance gap to the AMCs as they strive to meet the SDGs. Now, implementation of the National Sustainable Development Plan will be supported by the United Nations Development Program under a Memorandum of Understanding that was signed back on November 2nd of 2020 by the Premier of the Virgin Islands, Honorable Andrew A. Foy, and UN Assistant Secretary, Mr. Luis Felipe Lopez, that will also strengthen cooperation between the British Virgin Islands and the UNDP in the areas of sustainable development, climate resi resilience, and COVID-19 response and recovery. Now, the UN Resident Coordinator's Office in Barbados has also confirmed it is strengthening its coordination role among the UN agencies in the region to support the sustainable development of the British Virgin Islands and the countries included in the Eastern Caribbean. Now, viewers, in response to the disruption caused by COVID-19 to the sustainable development agenda and the negative economic, social, as well as health impacts of this global economic uh, pandemic, the UN is now helping the British Virgin Islands to address the effects of the virus as part of its multi-sectoral response plan to the Eastern Caribbean. Among other things, UNDP, UNICEF, as well as UN Women have collaborated with the British Virgin Islands government to produce a COVID-19 human and economic assistance assessment report on the islands, which has been used to really help guide the local response. Now, the Premier of the Virgin Islands, Honorable Andrew Foy, he has received really high commendations uh, for the regional statesmanship he has shown over the course of the global pandemic from the UN ECLAC community. Um, Mrs. Alicia Barsena, in particular, was very pleased with his response to the pandemic. Now, commenting on the British Virgin Islands cooperation with the UN, the Premier said, and I quote, the British Virgin Islands will continue to deepen our relationship with the UN as we work closely on the local response to COVID-19 and, and engage with regional and international partners to lay the groundwork for post-pandemic recovery, climate resilience, as well as sustainable development for the Caribbean region. Now, Ron, I know one of the concerns coming out of Brexit uh, of course, the United, the European Union, Union leaving, the UK leaving the European Union, one of the concerns we had was how would that affect us yes. as a British overseas territory? Here we see the, the Premier continuing to strengthen thighs with the United Nations to ensure that fallout isn't as large as we uh, see it, but also strengthening his allegiances in the region, which I think is very uh, important to yes. our, our sustainability. Here I, in I agree. Um, as a, a region, I think um, we are going to have to uh, come together, especially um, as the UK continues to uh, sort itself out in a, a number of capacities. And I think he's on the right track in mm -hmm. regards to making sure that our, our regional brothers and sisters know uh, that we are in this together. Absolutely. Viewers, we're going to go to a very quick commercial break. But when we come back, per Puerto Rico is now saying that COVID-19 vaccinations will be launched mid-December. I know this is a Big news for the region. We're literally, Puerto Rico is like a stone throw away. Um, so it really speaks to what the reality could be for us here too in the BVI. And as well, President-elect Biden has now uh, sprained his ankle. He actually has a fractured ankle uh, as a result of playing with his dog. All that and so much more when 284 News returns. The wind! Oh! What is the hell? I'm freaking out! I'm is time. 284 News is coming.
coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Viewers, welcome back. You're watching 284 News. Now, just across the waters on the regional scene out of the Associated Press, San Juan, Puerto Rico officials in Puerto Rico announced recently that the U.S. territory expects to receive its first COVID-19 vaccines by mid-December as the island hits a record number of daily cases and hospitalizations. Now, healthcare workers, teachers, and certain public sector employees are among those who will take priority, officials said. In an official quote, this will be the best gift we can receive, said Health Secretary Lorenzo Gonzalez. Now, Puerto Rico requested one million vaccines, but not all are, not all are expected to arrive at once, said Jose Reyes, now Adjutant General of the Puerto Rico National Guard, which will help distribute them. Now, many have worried how a U.S. territory that struggles with daily power outages uh, will store vaccines that require extremely cold temperatures. But Reyes said they have three containers available that will provide the proper temperatures. Now, the island of 30 3.2 million people has reported more than 47,000 confirmed cases, more than 39 thousand probable ones and more than 1,000 deaths. Gonzalez said in a report, a record of seven people died, 17, sorry, died on November 17th, the highest daily debt uh, load since the pandemic began. Now, in addition, some 600 confirmed cases are being reported daily. Now, the U.S. territory recently launched a highly praised program in which free rapid testing was provided at a toll boot across the island. Now, more than 25,000 people participated with the health care workers detecting more than 800 confirmed positive cases. Now, um, this was confirmed, Jovan, and I know this is great news for uh, the residents of uh, Puerto Rico. We see where COVID has uh, not only taken a lot of lives, uh, but it's severely impacted them. And uh, for them to be able to receive uh, this assistance, hopefully uh, the word uh, of mid-December is accurate and they will be able to stick to that. And we continue to wish them the very best. Absolutely. And it really resembles what's happening also in the USVI as, yes. a, of course, a dependent of the United States. They are also on the list to receive the vaccines at the same time that the Correct. actual states in the United States of America will receive. And it really speaks volumes, really, to uh, their commitment to move forward with this with this uh, virus, Ron. When you think about the vaccine, I think persons are looking at it ultimately as your passport to get mm -hmm. back to life. So I'm really happy to see uh, that, especially based on the effectiveness, uh, the rates we've seen recently with uh, the vaccines, Moderna, Pfizer, and then there's a third one as well that um, I think speak to a 94.5% effective yes. rate. Um, I think it's really good news for the region. So viewers, we're going to definitely keep you posted on that. But on we go uh, with news coming out of America once again. Now, President-elect Joe Biden has fractured his foot while playing with one of his dogs, according to his doctor. Mr. Biden, 78 years old, twisted his ankle on Saturday when he slipped while uh, with Major, one of his two German shepherds. The Democrat visited an orthopedist in New York, Delaware, a day later out of abundance of caution. And his personal physician, Dr. Kevin O'Connor, said that the initial x-rays did not show an obvious fracture, but ordered a more detailed CT scan. Now, the subsequent scan found that Mr. Biden had suffered a hairline fracture of two small bones in the middle of his right foot, the doctor said. It is anticipated that he will likely require a walking boot for several weeks. Now, Mr. Biden, who beat Republican Mr. Donald Trump in November's election, is due to receive his first presidential daily briefing on Monday. This was made possible by the announcement a week ago that the transition process has begun. Mr. Biden, who turned 78 years old earlier in this month, will become the oldest U.S. president to take office after he's inaugurated on January 20th of next year. Now, given this, Mr. Biden's health is expected to be watched very closely by allies and opponents. His doctor described him as healthy, vigorous, and fit to successfully execute the duties of the presidency in a medical report received uh, released last December. Now, Mr. Biden is also set to bring his two German shepherds, which is champ and major, of course, uh, with him to the White House, the president-elect, and his wife, Mrs. Jill Biden, fostered major from a dog shelter in Delaware. 
and made his adoption official in November of 2018. Champ lived with the Bidens on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. during Obama's presidency. When the former senator, uh, when he was former senator, sorry, uh, and served as vice president. So, Ron, here we see, I know lots of persons were very, very concerned about uh, the health of President-elect Joe Biden. Uh, definitely one of the concerns coming out of his campaign uh, during the campaign season. Um, is he fit enough? Is he healthy enough? And I think one of the things we have to continue to take into consideration is the health of our officials. Absolutely. And, and persons are even saying, you know, there should be a cutoff age. But here we see, uh, nevertheless, very capable. Clearly, this was an accident, but we do know that he will definitely need to walk around in a cast for a few weeks to come. And we need him because he has been uh, elected president, so we need him to come and uh, assist uh, in that capacity. Jovan, uh, that issue of um, persons serving um, beyond a certain age is one that we have uh, faced here in the yes. territory of the Virgin Islands as well. Uh, many of our elected officials um, we call career politicians have mm. served for uh, 25, yes. uh, sometimes Several more. Times. Um, and uh, we see where sometimes it's, uh, it's questioned whether or not there should be a cap mm -hmm. on how long they serve or uh, at what age they should be eligible to do so. Absolutely. I think the concern is really passing the torch. Uh, how do we bridge the gap between generations? Because yes, we have politicians who are well seasoned, who have done this for quite a number of years, yes. who essentially, like we say, know the ropes. Right. Uh, but we do have a, a bevy of young people, especially when we examining our, our youth parliamentarians, especially those who yes. were in, uh, initiated recently, uh, they are very talented and coming with very bright ideas and very conscious of what's going on on the ground um, currently. So we, we really have to find a way to I think create a balance I agree. between yes. the two generations. Uh, viewers, before we go, there's some pretty exciting stuff that took place today. Of course, the superintendents paraded the HM prison, mm -hmm. uh, which saw uh, Prison officers being honored for exemplary uh, work. Yes. Uh, present there was the Deputy Premier, or sorry, the Minister of Health mm -hmm. and Social Development, the Honorable Carvin Malone, mm -hmm. for which the pre uh, prison falls under. We had the right, governor, of course, mm -hmm. uh, there as well. And it was really a sight to see mm -hmm. as the um, well-dressed, um, very uh, well-articulated prison officers received uh, their awards. And also uh, today they had a very amazing and fun-filled uh, poetry uh, slam off yes. between the uh, prison officers so that was that was totally exciting. Oh my gosh, it's something I look forward to every single year. Yes. But the spin this year is instead of the, the actual, yes, instead of the inmates performing or competing mm -hmm. rather, the officers will be competing this time around and they're being judged by the inmates. Yes. So I think it's so exciting. Uh, viewers will continue to uh, bring you all the details on that. But we just love our team up Indeed. there. And of course, for always inviting us to be a part of anything that they have up there at Her Majesty's Prison. Viewers, that is all the time we have for today uh, but be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com we're also on facebook at 284media and 284bvi on instagram as well as twitter my name is javon wilson and i'm ron grant we'll see you tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local regional and of course international content happy monday everybody have a great week bye